All right, guys, I'm back here at the hangar. Um, today is probably the most requested video. This is the most requested video I think I've ever had. And a lot of it has to do with when people buy planes like the Challenger 1 or, or the Challenger 2 that they want to know what they need or what they need to put inside or what I use. I, I often get asked, what do you use for, you know, knowing where you are? How do you communicate? And every once in a while in the videos, I'll say, hey, this is my this or that. But I have never actually made a video going over all of it. And that's what today is going to be. So uh, what I'm not a CFI in this video. I'm not saying this is how you have to do it or this is the best way. I'm simply showing you this is how I do it. So. Uh, because people ask so again probably my most requested video if you're watching this please like and subscribe to my channel um, I'm gonna try to put a video out every week of doing something with the airplane uh, So yeah, if you could do that, I appreciate it. Go ahead and do that right now. It's like up there somewhere uh, So I'm gonna pre-flight the plane because I might fly it not in this video in the next video We'll get it outside and then we'll do I'll show you guys what I use when I fly All right, we're outside um before I start with my cockpit stuff, I'm actually gonna show you guys how I do my cameras. Um, so I just sent a video to Mike too about this, not uh, not Challenger Mike, but uh, my buddy Mike. This is called uh, Sky JFFJ. This is just a mount that you, know, you put in the bolt here. And uh, basically my GoPro 11, which is the one I'm filming with right now, it sticks here. No wires go to this. So I just have multiple batteries if I'm doing a longer trip. Um, this is the one where you see the picture of the whole side of my plane. Uh, again, it's called Sky JFFJ. It's metal or aluminum or something. It works really well and it does tie into this. And remember you can't over tighten that because it's gotta be kind of loose still. Not loose, but you know, the bolt needs to have some play uh, for safety. Then my GoPro 9, which is this one. This one actually gets plugged into this mount that I have sticky to the window up here. And um, when I do that, I plug in this cable here, which I don't really want to undo it, but it's called the, it's a www.inflight, um, crap, hold on, inflightcam.com, okay? So this is, this plugs into the GoPro. And what this does is it comes over and it plugs into your com box. But before you plug it in your com box, you have to plug your headset into it because it takes its place in the com box. And when you turn the power on, that's how that's how you're hearing me talk when I'm in the airplane is through the in-flight cam uh, audio cable through the com box. Um, another cool thing about this, I don't really want to unzip tie it right now. But another cool thing is it actually has a US or a, a, a power in. So I can actually, from these little, where is it at? From those little, uh, the power ports there, I can actually plug a thing in, a really short one, and go to this, and it'll power this battery indefinitely. So that's pretty awesome. So the only thing I really have to worry about is bringing cam or batteries for my 10. Um, any questions about that, leave it in the thing. <clears throat> Again, I'm not trying to say my way is the way. I'm trying to tell people, like if somebody messages me and says, hey, what are you using, blah, blah, blah. I want to be able just to take this video, shoot it right to them. So uh, before we get in the cockpit, um, I'm going to get in to do the rest of it. But I have this little like disc golf, I call it a satchel, but it's like a, a amateur disc golf bag. Um, and basically what I do when I take this with me is I take this part of it, I go around this part of the airplane and I put this, the, the bag inside of it. And then the bag basically just sits right here. Now, I know what you're saying. Oh, but John, that's unsafe. What if it hits your leg? Listen, it rubs the side of my leg, but it, I put it tight enough to where it doesn't interfere with the rudder, with the linkage for the rudder and the stick it's up in here basically so this is a decent space i can keep my drink in there i can keep my phone in there i can keep whatever i want in there and then the theory which i haven't done yet is that when i get somewhere i can disconnect this and have this with me and not have to leave it at the airport because obviously i don't have a closed cockpit so anybody can walk up and uh, not that I, it's really a worry but you know it's just this is how i decided to do it so um that answers that question uh anything else while i'm out here while i'm out here too I do sometimes use the claw. I haven't really used it a lot in this channel. 
uh this is like my son does a fishing channel and stuff and this kind of more is for that but uh this is kind of cool because if i want to change which i'm going to change the perspective here soon because i know people are getting tired of the same thing but you know you can put this anywhere and it doesn't matter how fast or slow with this airplane you go this ain't going nowhere um it might shift its view a little bit but this this claw is not coming off it's very hard it probably takes I don't know 50 or 60 pounds of pressure i would assume maybe less i don't know um to get it on and off but your gopro just slides on the top of that so anyways let me get in the cockpit and then i'm going to show you guys what i use when it comes to the digital stuff all right guys i hope you can see what i've done in here you have to look at my legs um before i get started um i do like to use my flyboys uh this is my knee board um when I'm going along long places, like for example, I'm planning a trip to Paris, Texas, and this is kind of my um, backup, you know, where I would go, um, all the frequencies, all the runways, just in case I lose any of my digital references. Um, so never be above a knee board. I, I know so many people I've heard like people like, oh yeah, that's old school. I don't use knee board, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's something you can look at. I have on the side of it, there's pen. You can put whatever you want in there. It's pretty cool. It's called Flyboy from flyboys.com. Um, it's cool. So to get you guys started in here, I will put the price to all this stuff, including the in-flight uh, cable I will link that and I, or not link that I'm not gonna link it I don't know how to do all that but I will put a picture of it here on the screen and show you what it costs I believe that's from sporties all right guys so the number one the meat and potatoes of my flying in the Challenger is the iPad mini um, I have the RAM mount uh, and an iPad mini um, I don't know the exact price of these right now I will link it I think I got this one for six hundred dollars used from another pilot if you're going to buy something from another pilot online, there are so many scams going on right now. Make sure you have mutual friends with them or you know them or you're going to meet up with them in person. Do not send them money. This guy was cool. He lived over in Dallas. I was able to get it fairly quickly and it was a good deal. And it already had four flight on it, but you know, obviously, so I knew it worked good. Um, I just slipped this into my mount and I turn it on. Then I turn on my Stratus 3. This is my ADS-B in so this device is how I see other airplanes not how they see me I do not have ADS-B in in this aircraft which means when I'm flying around I've got to use my eyes to look around and I have to look on here um, I do fly over to Tyler and stuff and that is Delta airspace so not also do I have to talk to the tower um, I need to be able to see the other airplanes so and there have been many times for you guys who are going to be ultralight guys, part 103, or even sport pilots or whatever, and think, well, I don't need this or I don't want this. Listen, you don't have to have this, but I will tell you, this has already saved my butt in this airplane a few times from very close calls. Um, you know, one of them was the Cirrus that was right over top of me in one of my videos a little while back. So iPad mini, and then I have four flight. So what you're looking at here is four flight. Um, when you pull it up, you basically have to make sure that it's connected to the Stratus by going to settings. And then you look here, where is it at? Right here, it says Wi-Fi hooked up to Stratus. So that's good. Then I go back to it. Then I know I'm ready to fly. I find myself, if I have a flight plan that I'm doing, uh, you have your flight plan pulled up here. And while you're flying, you know, it'll show you your little where you've been, um, like a little track. Obviously, if you're a four flight person, you're like bored with me saying all this. But for somebody who doesn't know, four flight is absolutely amazing on the iPad. If you don't like Apple products, I actually don't like Apple products. I use the Samsung cell phone. If you don't like Apple products, there is a website or a few of them that you can use that you can put it on your phone or a Samsung tablet. And it still communicates with this. Um, here over the screen right now, I'll put what they are. Uh, I can't remember. I think one's called iFly and there's a couple others. So, uh, but if you want the cream of the crop, the cream of the crop and the most safety factor, in my opinion, is going to be four flight. Now, again, this is my opinion, guys. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you have to do it my way or my way is the perfect way. So please don't go in my comments and be like, oh, you're an idiot and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I know. Okay, cool. So that's what I use there. Um, the last thing really in here is my Yesu 550. Um, hopefully you guys are seeing all this. The sun's kind of in a weird spot. My Yesu 550. Uh, I was not, I'm not going to lie. I was not a fan of it when I bought it. When I bought it, it only had the antenna, the physical antenna, the small one. And I was using it in here and I'd be flying with groups of people on multiple occasions and they could not hear me at all. 
Uh, what changed it for me was putting the, let's see if I can see it, putting that up there, putting that antenna uh, through there. And this wire now runs up through the middle and up into that antenna. And now I can hear on, almost unlimited, like sometimes planes that are 40 miles away and they can hear me. Um, I've literally had conversations with people that were that far away from me. It works really good. Um, it is not hardwired in. There is a 12 volt hardwire for it and I need to, to bring it in here and put it in here, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. My plane has all this 12 volt stuff in it and behind here there is a 12 volt relay box and all the wires come out of it. Um, I have my ELT and all my stuff. This is for how my wigwag or my lights go back and forth. And this is all my lights. Uh, not that anybody asked, but yeah, that's what that is. And then the comm box I'm using is the Sigtronics now. Sorry, I'm I'm not looking at. I'm in the plane and I'm fat. So, yeah, the Sigtronics is just a two place. Obviously, you don't need any more than that because you know you don't have four people in your plane. So, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much what I use in here, guys. It's real simple. If you have an ultralight, like a, a single seater and it's lightweight, you're going to be flying at a lower altitude than I am probably. Uh, I like to get up to 2,500. Uh, main reason for that is just where I feel more comfortable. I want to know that if the engine shuts off, I have somewhere to go or I feel comfortable getting there. At 2,500 feet, that gives you more of a blanket, you know. And when I'm flying, I am always flying for, uh, for you know, the fields, uh, as you guys know. So let me show you guys one more thing here. Hold on. All right, guys. So this is less of what I use in the plane and more of something I like to do um, on for myself. And I'm going to have this in my next video, too. Anytime I'm flying to an airport, like right now, I don't know if you guys can see the screen. It's like kind of flashing. But right now you can see I'm on that. I can go on my phone and go to satellite. OK, and I can look. I don't know if you guys can see this. The sun's kind of wreaking havoc right now. But I can see that there are fields and I like to look at every field I go to everywhere I fly to. I look at it before I go there and then before I take off again so that like say I'm right here. Uh, I just took off on runway 18 and my engines, I lose my engine. Well, I know I have this field. I know I have that field. I might not make that, but I also might make it back. I don't know, but I like to look at it this way. So that's another digital reference I use in the airplane. So I hope, um, let me see. I hope this helps somebody. I hope that the camera actually saw what I was doing. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Again, I'm not a CFI and I'm just trying to, um, I see people reach out to me now that I have this channel and what I'm seeing is people getting deterred from these type of aircraft because of like the things that they need in here, navigation and things of that nature. And obviously it's very important. So if you're buying an, uh, uh, an ultralight, uh, and you're not a pilot yet, just know that you're not the only person up there. So again, just, I'm only talking about this because people ask me constantly what I use and, uh, this is what I use. So if you guys have any questions, leave it down below, please subscribe. And yeah, the next video you guys see will be me doing the impossible turn. So we'll see, we'll see how possible it is. Thanks guys.